This is episode number 13 of the Expert Table Tennis Podcast with me, Ben Larkham. Firstly, I'd like to apologise for not having a show for you last week. I was away on holiday and I didn't manage to sort out guests in time. Should have been more prepared. So we had a blank week last Friday. I've got loads of guests lined up into the kind of next couple of months. So we'll be having an episode every Friday from now on. So you won't have to worry about that. Every week you will have your weekly dose of the Expert Table Tennis Podcast. On today's show, I'm joined by Sam Priestley, who is the author of the book Expert in a Year, which is all about our Expert in a Year challenge that we did back in 2014. I thought it would be great to get Sam on the podcast to talk through some of the reasons why he decided to write a book about the challenge and kind of what you can expect from the book so that if you do buy the book, this is kind of something that you can listen to to go alongside it to kind of get a bit more of an idea of how the challenge went for Sam and what his thoughts are on it now kind of six months after it's finished. It's worth pointing out that we recorded this interview about three weeks ago now, back kind of towards the end of July. So we mentioned a few things that you might think, well, that doesn't really make sense because <laughs> because it's like a slightly old interview. Just thought I'd let you know that. That's definitely enough waffle from me. So let's get into the interview with Sam Priestley, author of the book Expert in a Year, which is available on Amazon to buy from now. So I'm joined today on the show by Sam Priestley, who was the the guinea pig in my Expert in a Year challenge. Sam, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks, Ben. Good to be here. Thanks for inviting me on the show. Thanks for coming on. Now you were you played table tennis with me yesterday for what must be the first time in in at least a couple of months. How did that go? Yeah, it was it was it was pretty nostalgic, but it, no, it was really good. I felt I was quite worried because it's been a couple of months since I last played, ever since sort of the um, the league ended, and uh, I was quite worried that I I just would have lost it all. But actually, it came back really quickly. I was getting some good shots on, and I just yeah, I just really enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I managed to film like the first 30 seconds of your practice last night, hoping that you'd be <laughs> like, looking like an absolute fool and at least I'd get a, an interesting video out of it, but it, it actually turned out to be fine. Yeah, I tried not to do any top spins. I was just dri- driving for the first like, come on, get your feeling back. Don't try anything fancy. Keep the ball on the table. That seemed to work quite well. And then you did some matches and stuff. Was that How did that compare to how you were playing six months ago? Yeah, it was good. There'd be again, it'd be the occasional thing where I'd go for a shot, which I'd norm, which I would have once be getting on the table, and um, I would just sort of miss time it or something. But I feel like that would come back quite quickly. I was getting some absolute blinders on, which would win me a point, even if I'd missed the same blinder the next shot. But no, it was it was good. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. From what I could see, it looked like your backhand was doing a lot better than your forehand, which is a bit odd seeing how forehand dominant you were during the challenge yeah it's a bit strange really isn't it i wonder whether it was maybe because we really focused on the backhand for the last couple of months and maybe that's you know the bit i've retained most because it was what we worked on so recently whereas you know we kind of got my forehand got all right in the first by sort of march in the year my forehand was kind of getting there but i don't know the other thing i was thinking is maybe because it's a bit of a shorter shot it's a bit more controlled whereas my forehand's quite long and swingy. Yeah, more to go wrong. More to go wrong and more like it's, the timing's easy, easier to mess up, especially when I have to like move my feet. Yeah, I think your footwork was what was letting you down yeah, it was pretty, massively. Yeah. It was pretty bad, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm assuming that most people listening know who you are, but for those that don't, do you want to kind of let people know who you are and why you're on the show? Yeah, sure. So I've been your friend for a, a long time. And um, at the end of 2013, you had this idea for a challenge where you wanted to take an old novice who'd never really played table tennis before and, and try and get them quite good. And you had this sort of ridiculous ambition that, oh, yeah, you can get someone who's never played before into the top 250 in the UK at table tennis. And you, you came to me and said, oh, do you fancy getting trained, training every day for a year? He said, oh, by the end of it. I could be as good as you were after sort of 10 years of training. So I thought, yeah, sounds good. Uh, and then we spent we spent the year doing it. We started off just doing one hour a day, and that turned out not to be enough. So we started cranking out as many hours as possible. We went away quite a lot. We went to Denmark, uh, Hungary, Malta, Middlesbrough. <laughs> um, 
had a really intense year, spent the last like two months competing, did like the sort of the Grand Prix circuit, uh, spending every weekend playing tournaments. And and then it ended and we didn't I didn't get the target, unsurprisingly, I think for everyone except myself. Um but I got quite good at table tennis. Well, I think I got quite good at table tennis. I got to the point where to all my friends who I knew before I started table tennis, I, they think I'm now really good and it's really impressive. But I'm, if I'm, I'm still go up against someone like you and get absolutely annihilated. And we got a little viral video out of it as well. Yeah, we finished it. And I think we were both, you know, maybe a little bit glad it's over. A little bit sad that we hadn't reached a um, reached target. And then that was kind of it. And then um, about a month later, someone posted it on Reddit and people just found it really interesting. We did this like one second a day video, which was a sort of a, a five minute long clip where we take taken one second from each day of training. And once you put it all together, it was so obvious to see the progression and me getting a lot better. And it just became really popular. And I think we got you know, one and a half million views on YouTube and new, like BBC wrote about it, Huffington Post. I think we were on Swedish television, which was a bit of a surreal experience. Yeah. Um, yeah, and like, what was interesting is a lot of people who don't play table tennis found it really interesting, the idea of uh, just working on something really hard for a year and then actually going from being clumsy, awkward. I think the BBC described me as a, an uncoordinated computer geek. Yeah. So going from, going from someone like that to actually looking a bit more fluid and natural and being obviously quite good at table tennis for the um for the average non-table tennis person well it's certainly a, an eventful year you've now been working on a book for the past six months or so yeah thanks a lot i'm afraid i'm going to sort of shamelessly plug it a bit in, in this uh in this interview yeah well basically ever since that viral video came out where well, i got i got contacted by um a couple of people who work in the publishing industry and they said oh you should definitely write a book out of it I was like, how could I write a book about a challenge that we failed? Um, and they were like, no, look, the fact that we, we failed to get this target actually is one of the things that actually makes it interesting and that it was still motivational and that a lot of people actually found it quite interesting. So I spent the last, you know, almost six months working on that because it's been, it's been a lot harder than, than I expected. Um, but it's been, I think, I think we've got a really good book at, at the end of it. There's not so one of the reasons I kind of ended up doing it was because there aren't really that many books in table tennis, and that I, when I was playing every day, I was hunting around for as much literature as possible to read, and um, there wasn't just there, couldn't, there, there just couldn't really find anything. You know, there's obviously Bounce by Mafi Saeed, which is a really good book, and you know I'm not expecting my one to be anywhere near as good as that. But apart from that, there wasn't there wasn't really that much. Um, so something which. You know, I'm hoping that a lot of people in table tennis will read it and they'll relate to a lot of the stories. You know, what it's like to go to your first ever tournament, what it's like when you're just you're in a real like rough patch and you feel like you're not improving, uh, or what it's like you know to lose to a ten year old after you've been training for like two months almost every day. Um, and then also, you know, the lessons that we've learned out of it. So one thing that a lot of people have said to me is that um, what's interesting about this challenge is that I have quite a sort of unique experience of what it's like to learn table tennis as, a, as an adult. A lot of the people who I was playing against have been playing as, for the whole of like the time they can remember. And, yeah. they, and that means they can't actually remember some of those times when they were learning because they were so young when they were doing it. So I think that's, that's quite interesting, you know, going from almost never having picked up a bat before to competing with some of the best people in the country. It's quite, even if I was getting battered, it's quite an interesting story. So is the book aimed at helping people get better at table tennis or like what's kind of the, why did you decide to write it? Yeah, so I, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to be arrogant enough to say that I can really help people <laughs> get better at table tennis. But, you know, I've, we've, I've tried to put in as many, you know, tips and the stuff that really helped me because, you know, over the year, you know, you know this, we tried so many different tactics and we kept sort of, Everybody we spoke to had a different idea of how you should train and, you know, what the best way was, you know, should you just be drilling, should you be doing just match play, you know, how much is um, the mental aspect, how does that affect your game, uh, how the nerves affect actually playing in tournaments, 
Um, you know, is it worth just cramming as many hours as possible or do you burn out? You know, how much should you be enjoying it versus just drilling and doing service practice? All these sort of things, you know, I think it's quite interesting to get my point of view as the guinea pig because I think yeah. there's a lot of coaches out there who don't remember going through these stages and they'll be, you know, coaching their, their students and they it might be interesting for them to see what it's actually like from that student's perspective. You know, one of the things we learned quite quickly was that just trying to do service practice for sort of 15, 20 minutes every day was incredibly boring and demotivating. And um, another thing, you know, doing all the sort of extra physical stuff, we decided actually wasn't that, you know, a lot of people told us it was really important being very fit, but we quickly realised that it was actually more important for me to work on my technique because, the te- the, you know, fitness helps, but doesn't matter who I was playing against if someone was a, had a much better technique than me they'd still or a better feeling than me they'd still be beating me no matter how fit I was yeah um so I think mean, that's quite interesting and and then also I'd really like to what's what I've, one of the things I sort of really noticed when going to clubs there's lots of adults who've never really they've been playing for years and they've got good but they've never really bothered to or they thought that there's no way they could actually learn proper technique or they they see the idea of going doing the Grand Prix circuit as as an impossibility, something they would never be able to do. And I really like to sort of motivate them and show that if they really put in the work, they can do it. I mean, let's try and get some of this. Cause you've you've kind of briefly covered loads of the stuff that you write about in the book, but specifically, what are some of the the kind of key pieces of advice that you'd have for someone if someone came up to you and said, "Sam, I'm 30 years old and I want to get." really good at table tennis but i've never really had any coaching or anything what advice would you give for them what what are some of the key things yeah it's interesting isn't it because probably you know one of the things is the advice i'd give might not necessarily be what we did so one thing i'd say is just try and get involved in a local club as quickly as possible because you'll massively benefit from playing a lot of different people you know, especially if the club has got some players who are much better than you, who have got sort of that correct technique you can watch. We did this thing where we were training while well, getting coaching, one-to-one coaching, and we thought that would give me a massive advantage. But there was actually some drawbacks to that as well. It meant that I only really got to play against your style. I mean, when I came up against other people, I just wasn't, I just wasn't used to them. So I'd say straight in there get in a club where you're constantly playing with different people and so you get used to sort of adjusting to how different people play i'd say you know it's good to set a challenge you know maybe not the challenge we set because i think that's too ambitious um but something you know say oh i'm gonna i'm gonna give it a year and buy this you know i want to be entering you know my first local tournament in a year's time or after year i want to be entered into a local league and you know, playing regularly in in my team, something where you set yourself a goal and you can just go for it. I think one of the big things for us was the fact that we told a lot of people about it. it meant it was very hard to quit. There was times when you know I talk about this a bit in the book, but um, there was particularly one time where I was that going through real burnout. We just got back from well, I'd just been to two sort of full time camps back to back, one in Denmark, one in Hungary, where I'd been playing, you know all day every day for three weeks and we came straight back and I got off the plane and that evening I was back in the club playing table tennis again and I just just burnt out and I got really grumpy and I wasn't improving I wasn't a particularly nice person and um, I think at that point if it hadn't been for the fact that there were so many people who were sort of watching the challenge or you know all my friends and family who who I who were told about it I, that I could well have um could well have quit so I think yeah. if you can tell a few people about it, that that's your goal, because then they're going to ask you about it. And it's a little bit embarrassing to say, oh, you know, I quit. Um, so I'd, I'd recommend that. I'd recommend, you know, I found this visualization stuff quite useful. So just watching YouTube videos of really good players or, um, you know, YouTube videos of what correct technique looks like. I think that helps. But generally, you know, the thing I learned about table tennis is that it is hard. And it will take a long time. Like you can't, you don't expect to get to become like best in the country in a couple of years. You know, put in the work, and you will get better. That's one thing I definitely learned is that you work hard and you will get better. 
but that it's not easy. Sure. So I didn't really explain that very well. It's kind of <laughs> so often. If you've ever heard that, you know the the expression, "It's something easy, it's not worthwhile." I think that's really true for table tennis. It's when we finished the challenge, someone messaged us and said, um, "You know, I would have been really upset if you had achieved the goal." Because I've been working on this for 10 years and I haven't achieved a goal yet. And it would have really devalued all that work I put in. Yeah. Um, so by actually, you know, you've got to have so much respect for these players, like someone like you who's you know, top 150 or the players who are top in the country because they've put in a ridiculous amount of work and it's showing. But then also there's a lot of respect for people who've put in a few years and have got a lot better over it. I think you'd, you'd struggle to find someone who's worked hard at it and doesn't get good. Well, that was what Rory said in the in the podcast episode last week that you know he was pretty convinced that talent really wasn't that important for table tennis and if you put in the work you'd get better. Yeah, I think I think he's definitely right. You know, it might some people might do it quicker. But if you put in the work, you'll get better, and if you put in more work than everyone else, you'll get better than everyone else. So I just say, just go for it. Um, set a challenge at least a year, I think, because um, a year is, you know, you're not going to get very good in a few weeks, but a year is a good time. And by the end of that, you'll be able to see whether decide whether you want to continue doing it and then just work hard. So when it comes to working hard and doing loads of practice, what kind of things do you think people should be doing? Is it just kind of like doing the shots over and over? Do you think they'd be better off doing loads of matches? Because I think obviously coaches have different opinions and, and then that makes it even more confusing for players to decide what they should be doing. Yeah, this is something I found out pretty quickly is everyone kind of has a different idea of how you should be training. And I think I think there's no simple answer. Um, you know, look at the Chinese teams and they're doing all, you know, set drills, set practice. But then they've got such a long time frame to learn. You know, they're they're committing to saying, oh, in 10 years' time, I'm going to be really good. I'm going to train really hard for those 10 years. Because if you spend your time just drilling, it's going to take you a long time before you're actually able to translate that properly into match play. Mm. Whereas if you start off going straight into match play, you'll get quite good at match play quite quickly. But your technique will suffer. So I think it really depends, you know, what is your... You know, what is your horizon for how long you're going to be training for? I think with the year, we should we should have done a lot more um, match play against different people um, from an earlier stage. But if we had a five year horizon, that might not have been that might not have been the case. It might have been worth maybe if we'd done what we did in one year, but spread it over five years, that would have worked quite well. But I think from a one year point of view, we were giving ourselves too short a time at each stage. So we won't spend enough time drilling to get really good at the technique. But that meant then we won't spend enough time on match play to get, get really good at match play. So I was kind of okay at everything. I just wasn't really good at anything. Yeah. Um, I think if you're doing a year, match play is really important. I think it's worth, you know, thinking about technique, um, keeping in mind, you know, watching your video yourself, watch yourself back, um, look at where you're going wrong. And then just when you're playing matches, just have a, Think about the technique as you're doing it and think about where you're doing wrong and where you can improve. But if you're in it for the long haul, yeah, drilling, match play and lots of hard work. Have you come across this guy, Andrew Couchman, that's just started his own table tennis challenge? Yeah, I have. He um, he added me on Facebook. Thought it was quite, yeah, he added me as nice. well. Yeah, I haven't really looked into it too much, but um, what's he saying? That he's, he's given himself a three-year target and he wants to become a, a ranked player. Yeah, like on the on the ranking list, not the rating list. So that's like top six hundred in England. Okay. So instead of us saying top two fifty in one year, he's saying top six hundred in three years, which sounds you know pretty achievable to me. Yeah, that's that. I think is a, a realistic goal. I don't think it'll be easy, but I think uh, I think he can do it. Yeah, I think anyone can do it if they if they work hard enough. Do you know how much he's playing on training? I think that'll be a key uh, key part to it. No, I think I think he's planning on doing kind of pretty much most days, or or kind of at least four or five times a week. Yeah, I think I think he can do it. I think he can do it. I think you see. He sent um, me a, he sent he sent me a message this week. Um, you know, it's like deja vu going back to your training where he said <laughs> that he'd had like a really good 
training session and then he went to a club and tried playing some matches against people and it all went out the window <laughs> and, and you know there was nothing that he'd done in training he was able to do in his matches like that's that is such a common problem for the beginner in table tennis isn't it yeah it really is it really is uh, it's, it's really frustrating as well especially when people are watching you you know when you're telling your mates you're doing it and then they see you actually get destroyed by a 10 year old in um in a, in a match have I you got any tips for kind of transitioning practice to matches was there anything that you found that particularly helped well it sounds good that he's already going to clubs to practice i think that's going to be that's going to be key to him and if he's if he's doing a bit of both that sounds good uh my one tip for getting results from matches quickly is if he focuses if he spends a bit of time working on his service service practice because that's just some easy wins yeah if he spends if you know if he puts a bit of time into that within Within just a few weeks, there'll be people who just won't be able to return his serve and he'll be able to just get easy wins off. So I found that to be quite a nice, confident boost. Uh, and then that means it gives him sort of confidence then to sort of work on his game during during match play. Yeah. Yeah. Do, is he getting one-to-one coaching as well? He is, yeah. He's getting one or two times a week one-to-one coaching, you so. say. Yeah, I think if he can do that, one, one, maybe once a week, one-to-one coaching, and then as much experience playing as many different people as, with as many different styles as possible, and just get as much table time as possible, and I reckon he'll, he'll, do, he'll do it, yeah. Yeah, for anyone that's interested in that, I think his website is andrewcouchmantabletennis.wordpress.com. I'll put, a, I'll put a link up on the website. So, um. Sam, you haven't played much table tennis recently. Are you planning on getting back into it kind of as the as the new season comes up? Yeah, I am. I'm registered to play for Ish in the in the local league. Uh, I'm not sure which team I'm gonna be in yet. Maybe Division Four I was I was looking at. I did um Division Five last season. I think I had a ninety five percent win rate or something like that. So I'm gonna my idea is go up to four for the next season and then the season after that got to three, then after that got to two and work my way up and just try and keep a really high win rate. I'm quite enjoying being, you know, a bit of a big fish in a small pond because I've gone from playing these um, Grand Prix and getting absolutely battered by having a 90% loss rate to going to the local league and having a 90% win rate. So it's quite a nice confidence boost. And it means I'm actually getting to it means I'm, I'm getting the reward from the year of training having done both do you think it's good to do both or do you think it's better to do one or the other what are your thoughts yeah i think you should do both and i think the one thing i was missing which would have been really helpful is to have someone at the same level to go against because yeah. i think I, I generally had people who are either a lot worse than me or a lot better than me which meant that i was either playing you know, really out there to try and get like high variance, just going for ridiculous shots, knowing that if I played just defensively, I'd just lose. So the only way I could beat someone better than me was by being lucky and doing massive shots and have them going on the table, Mm. which is useful to learn, but it's not a good way, you know, that doesn't make for a well-rounded game. And then playing people who are much worse, um, just, yeah, again, it didn't, it was almost the opposite. I was going for these big shots because I knew that I could just keep the ball on the table with really bad play and uh, and still win. So having someone okay. around my level where there was that competition, we were like working off each other, would would have, I think would have been quite helpful. Yeah, certainly that that was definitely something that you kind of missed out on a bit. Yeah, it's hard to do, you know. Like there aren't that many people, adult beginners, who are working towards the same thing that I was. It was quite good. You know, when we went to Denmark on that training camp, that was good because I was in a group of people and we were all quite a similar level because we were sort of, everyone everyone at the camp was ranked and then we were put into groups um, based on our sort of skill level. And I was probably midway in my group, yeah. which was really helpful because there's people who are slightly better than me, people who are slightly worse, but everybody was in reaching distance of everyone else. Mm. So there's always the chance that come match time that, um, you know, the underdog might win. That was probably the only time that happened for you, wasn't it? Like being in that 
that kind of a group where everyone's about the same level. Yeah, it was the only time, and it was awesome. I, I loved it. Denmark was um, one of the happiest I've been in the entire year at that camp. Yeah, it's, it's a good camp. Actually, that's going on right now. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, so I know awesome. some people that are on that now doing the training. Right, well, thanks for coming on the show, Sam. It's been really good talking to you. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. Where can people go to get the book? How much is it going to be? And, yeah, give us some information. Yeah, sure. So you can get the book on Amazon, you know, wherever you are in the world. You can go there. You can get it either in, um, you know, physical form as the actual book you hold, or you can get it, you know, for your Kindle. I'm also going to release an audiobook version, which is quite exciting. You're recording that yourself? Yeah, I'm going to record it myself, and hopefully that'll make it maybe the first ever table tennis audiobook. <laughs> yeah, be, probably. Be really exciting. Yeah, you know, and yeah, if any of your listeners want to contact me, they can email me at sam at sampriestley.com. That's sam at sampriestley.com. And I'd love to hear from you. And yeah, any questions, you know, as I say, I'm not an expert, but if you're a beginner, been through what you're going through and if you want any of my thoughts on on how you're getting on i'd love to chat with you or if you're in london area and you just want to have a have a play have a knock around then yeah i'd love to love to meet up love to you know do a bit more table tennis cool thanks for coming on the show sam thank you very much ben wish you good luck in the new season hopefully you can keep getting some decent wins in the local league yeah definitely (laughs) thank you very much Cheers, Sam. See you later. Goodbye. Bye. I really hope you enjoyed that interview. Now is the time where I just beg you, please, please, please go out and buy the book. It was written by Sam. It's very much Sam's story written uh, in his own words about his experience. But it was a joint effort that we both put together. And as a team, we spent ages working on it, editing it, coming up with a plan of how we wanted it to to work and flow together. So I'm really, really invested in this book too, as I was with the whole Expert in a Year Challenge project that I did with Sam. So we would really appreciate it if you would go out and buy a copy of the book. It's available on Amazon worldwide in Kindle edition. So wherever you are in the world, you should be able to grab a copy of the Kindle book. If you're in the UK or the US, you can head over to Amazon there and actually get the paperback as well. Mine is being delivered tomorrow morning, hopefully. So I haven't actually seen the paperback yet, but really excited to actually see our book in the flesh. So that's really cool. Who's the book for? Well, you should kind of know that if you've listened to the podcast, but I guess it's aimed at beginners and improvers going through the kind of things that they'll have to deal with if they want to become good at table tennis. So if that's you or you know anyone that fits into that category, then this is definitely a book that they should want to read and should be able to just aid them in their in their development and progress as a player. If you're a coach or any other kind of level of player, there's loads of stuff in the book that I reckon you will also find interesting. If you're just a a table tennis fan, like I assume you are because you're listening to the podcast, then yeah, I'm sure you'll love the book too. So please head over to Amazon and buy it. It was released on Wednesday, so that's two days ago. But it's really crucial that in these first few days we get as many sales and reviews on Amazon as possible because then it just kind of like highlights you in the eyes of Amazon. They're able to link you up to other books and and just spend a bit more time and effort kind of promoting you because they can see that that it's a book that people want to buy. So we'd appreciate it so much if you would go and grab a copy of the book and if you read it and you enjoy it please leave us a review on Amazon as well because that just really goes to show that we've written a decent book that people are enjoying so definitely leave us a review if you can buy the book it's what what are the pricings it's 3.99 on Kindle and 8.99 on paperback if you're in the UK in the US i think it's about $6 Kindle and $13 paperback something like that so we've tried to price it kind of as reasonably as possible and yeah that is enough of me begging you to buy the book but please 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 buy it and share it with your friends if you can just so that we can reach as many people with the book as possible kind of in this first week after launch 
I'll be back next week with a brand new episode. I'm actually interviewing loads of people this week, so I need to pick which one I want to use first. But we're going to have loads of great podcast episodes coming up in the future. I really enjoy doing them. I know that you guys enjoy listening to them. So thanks for checking out this episode. I will see you next Friday in episode number 14.